Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, I don't know. Is it a good evening as well, Brother Abdul Majid? There? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you? How have you been, brother? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, welcome back to our uh, show. Uh, our viewers missed you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So we have Brother Abdul Majid as usual, and as earlier announced, we are going to be looking at interesting uh, things tonight. We have how Islamic financial institutions work, and he will be taking us through, and this discussion is going to be uh, something wonderful all of you should be looking up to, or you should be looking forward to enjoying. So we welcome Brother Abdul Majid, we welcome everyone. I see some people have already started joining. Uh, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, brother Yasin, uh, brother Hamdun. So we, we have quite a number of them. Okay, brother Abdul Majid. Yeah. Uh, we hear about uh, Islamic financial institutions. Okay. It is something that has uh, come up, something that we are discussing everywhere. Today we wanted to. Uh, give our viewers at least a clue about it when we talk about because last time we talked about islamic economics and how it differs now we need to look at the financial institutions and how different they are so maybe by the end of this uh show this program we hope that our viewers will be able to have uh learned something about the islamic financial institutions so what are we looking at? What are they exactly? Yeah, thank you for the listener. And I think to start, we should start by defining what is an, an, uh, an, an, a financial institution, first of all. The financial institutions are financial intermediaries. Uh, kind of is that kind of, uh, this institution channel money from the deficit unit, from the surplus unit to the deficit unit. What do you mean by I mean surplus unit? Because in the economy, normally we have two types of people: people who have more than they need, have more money. They call it the deficit unit, mm -hmm. and the surplus. I mean, the, the surplus unit, and people who have, have we call the deficit unit. People who need money it doesn't mean to be poor. Even the government need money. I mean, financial institutions, big corporations, they need money to fund some type of maybe research, a project, or anything. And these financial institutions are intermediaries between these two kind. I mean, these two units. The channel money from the deficit unit from the surplus uh, surplus unit, the deficit the deficit unit. This is a financial institution. But why? When when we talk about Islamic financial institution, it's the same kind of institution. But the difference is an Islamic financial institution that based all the activity are based in Islamic law or in Sharia. Sharia compliant activity. This is the only, I mean, the only difference between financial institution and Islamic financial institution. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, well, uh, I have understood something very important. So, you, in your opinion, the financial institution in general is the intermediary between who wants money and who has money, right? Yes. So, the Islamic financial institution will not be so different from that, but the biggest difference is that the Islamic financial institution shall be following and observing Sharia principles. Yeah, of course. Well, that, that is quite uh, interesting. We have a number of people joining in. I hope uh, I hope there is no uh, any questions so far. Okay, so uh, how many are they generally in, 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 in general, financial institutions and Maybe we can look at the Islamic financial institutions, the types. You mean, yeah, in types, yeah, we have I mean, several types of financial institutions. We have commercial banks, which is a type of financial institution, which is maybe the largest uh, one, because the difference between, I mean, the, I mean the, the commercial banks, they have, I mean, they can accept deposit, because some type of financial institution cannot, cannot accept deposit, and the commercial banks, they accept deposit, because when you go to a bank or to any, maybe, as they call it sometimes, I mean, building society and you open an account, 
that you will be putting your money there and they have the right to, to hold the deposit, the public deposit from the public, from the general public. Those commercial banks, what they do, they take money from people who have money, who have deposit, and they give it to maybe to other people who need more that money. But we have also commercial, I mean, investment bank. The investment bank, normally they don't take deposit from the general public, but they help corporation and organization and countries to issue the bond, bond when you need debt, debt. I mean, they have, they provide consultancy services or they, they, they provide other type of services. There's those type of banks, they call it investment bank. And also they manage, I mean, funds from different people. These are, we have investment bank. We have uh, insurance companies. This insurance company, this is a type of company who provide insurance. They provide insurance for people. When people come and say, okay, I need insurance for maybe car insurance, life insurance, or any type of insurance. It can be any type of insurance, travel insurance, health insurance. And this constitution provides insurance to those, I mean, to, to, to a corporation, to individual, or to the company or corporations. We have also asset management firms. Those people, they, I mean, they pull money from different institutions. From those different institutions, they take that money and they invest it in different type of project and they give return to those type, I mean, to people at the end. We have, uh, this is, I mean, the biggest type of financial institution. We have uh, I mean, commercial banks, investment, investment banks, uh, uh, asset management uh, uh, firms. We also have insurance company and also we have, they call them brokerage firms. This is type, I mean, very special because they do not take money from public or anything, but they operate in financial in financial market. When people want to, I mean, to sell or buy asset, or let's say equity or share share from some company, those kind kind, uh, kind uh, type of company operate there. I mean, they they execute. I mean, order from different. I mean, different unit and different people or different I mean, organizations. They call it brokerage firms. I think this is the biggest um, type of financial institution. There can be more than that, but I think this is a big category. And within each category, we have, I mean, different types too. Well, and uh, within each category, we have different uh, types. So I would love for you, please, if you can help us understand or help our viewers understand a little more about commercial banks in, from the Islamic uh, perspective. Yeah, the commercial bank from Islamic perspective, because normally it's it's the one we deal with normally. Because when you go to a, a commercial bank, normally we open an account. I mean, an Islamic commercial bank. The open an account, they operate based on, I mean, Islamic law. That's the only difference between the commercial banks. Sometimes they call it mainstream bank, mainstream bank or, I mean, Islamic bank, or sometimes they call it commercial, or conventional banks. Those, I mean, Islamic, uh, Islamic commercial bank is only a bank with asset you can open a, in your account there. And you can do every, I mean, you can, I mean, have a, 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 the services you get from comer, I mean, other com, 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 commercial banks. But only the way, because those banks, when you take those money, they have to invest those money. They call it, I mean, treasury management. They have to invest those type of money. Mm -hmm. And by investing those type of money, I mean, the conventional bank, they can invest it anywhere. They can invest it in maybe tobacco companies. They can invest it in alcohol producing companies. They can invest it in any type of just to, to, to generate return for their, for their portfolio or for, for their investment. But an Islamic bank, when they take money from people, they don't give them interest. But, and also when they invest those, those money, I mean, the money, the pool from people or from corporation or from countries, when they have those money, they cannot invest them in any type of, I mean, of investment. They have to uh, uh, invest those type, I mean, invest the money based, I mean, uh, with compliance with Islamic law or Sharia principle. That's the difference. But when they deal with people also, when they deal with people, it's the same thing. They will not, I mean, when you go to an Islamic saving account, an Islamic corporation or Islamic commercial banks, they are saving account there. But the difference is sometimes is the same for the for the end user. I mean, the consumer see it. I mean, it's the same thing. But normally, it's not the same because they will give you. I mean, expected rate of returns. They will say, okay, maybe you will give you maybe one point one percent on your on your deposit. But it's not guaranteed because they will take that money and they invest it. When they invest it, they will give you some type. I mean, of the return. But it's different because different Islamic banks are different type of. Uh, 
uh, for saving account and even uh, I mean investment account in some Islamic banks they have investment account but many people go for saving account because it's more secure and because based on I mean on many many uh, many uh, banking system maybe in the UK here when you have a deposit in any bank I mean the bank is sick your 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 deposit is secure up to 85,000 pounds in the United States, it's up to two hundred fifty thousand U.S. dollars, because this is the. I mean, the U.S. government. I mean, can guarantee that for you. Even if the bank collapses, you'll get that money. That's why it's wise if you have I mean, large amount of money, don't to pull it in just one bank. You have to split it between two different bank, because this in the U.K. they call it financial services uh, compensation scheme. Here, I mean, it's only if you have one thousand pound, you have it's it's unwise to put it in just one account. You have to split it between two accounts. That even, yeah, we don't like that, but if the bank collapses, or you will get all your money back. But if you put it all in the in the one bank, you will just get maybe 84,000 and from the deposit, 85% of, of that deposit. That's why, based on that, Islamic bank can they guarantee. Some say they will say, okay, you will give you 1% one, 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 1 of your deposit. But at the end of the day, they will invest that money. And they can keep their promise, or they cannot keep, but normally, generally, they keep it 99%. Keep that promises because they will invest it. But the way, because what what people do not see, because sometimes we don't see the big picture. We say what's the difference between those banks and Islamic banks? They will not, I mean, invest that money to produce pork or to produce alcohol or any, I mean, self destruction for the society. They won't invest in that. And at the end, because I think as a Muslim, you have to, I mean, I mean to to be worried about what where the your money is invested. At the end, because you can sit there and give, I mean, a deposit and any and, and, uh, at any uh, at any, I mean, corporation or a bank, and at the end you are there, you know nothing, and your money is working to, I mean, to destroy a society or to do anything. And I think we have to take, I mean, uh, to take responsibility for where our money is invested. That's why we need Islamic bank to invest this money in thing which is, I mean, compliant to our our faith and our religion. I think that's very important. Yeah, that is uh, really very important, and that is one of the biggest differences, I believe. So we, we are looking at Islamic banks not investing in things that are haram, so we shall not be investing money in pork or bars or uh, liquor or anything. And uh, we are looking at the other conventional banks. There is something really you mentioned, and I would love for you to make it very, very clear. Uh, conventional banks yeah. uh, work uh, on interest. Mm. Yeah. on the basis of interest. Yeah. What is the equivalent of that? What do Islamic banks do? Yeah. Because people might be asking, how do they profit? How, how do they run the bank? And which one is most uh, actually profitable? Is it yeah. this or that? <laughs> yeah, this is a key <laughs> question. What I think we should put first before profit at the end of the day. But Yeah, I mean, our people, are, yeah. our people this, yeah. is, this is a question we've been asking. How do, you, how do they make money? I mean... <laughs> Yeah. How do they? Earn? Yeah, even yeah, even when you go to, I mean, a conventional bank or a commercial bank, no, normally they will took, they will look at at different type of to, I mean, to evaluate and to assess your your credit, I mean, credit worthiness before giving you, I mean, giving you money or anything. An Islamic bank normally, because the problem is this is one of the main challenge. Maybe we will talk about that and critiques, I mean, toward Islamic, I mean, Islamic banks. But at the end of the day, when they give you, I mean, those type of bank, because they are very strict, I mean, they are very strictly regulated. I mean, after the, I mean, the, 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 the 2008 financial crisis, the bank become a very regulated industry. That's why they cannot give money to everyone. And the equivalent of any maybe uh, if, of loan in Islamic bank are murabaha. Murabaha is, they call it a fixed uh, makeup, I mean, fixed uh, uh, a return or return makeup in, in English, I mean, the, the terminology is when you go to the bank, the bank will not give you money. They won't give you, I mean, loan. They will just buy what you need and sell it to you at a margin, at a profit margin. That's what the bank do. But at the end of the day, this, I mean, at the end, we have to look if it's illicit in Islam or not. But people will say it's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. Because the bank, when you go and you acquire an asset, I mean, let's say a car or maybe let's say a mortgage, when you acquire that house, before, because you take all the risk of that house, I mean, the price can go down, it can drop, it can collapse, head, earthquake can happen, anything can happen. Because in Islam, we do not, I mean, always the risk 
and they return as um, go to go to get together. You cannot split them. I mean, say, okay, I will sell the risk to somebody. That's why we cannot sell the risk. I mean, alone. You have to take it with the real asset because the Islamic bank are taking asset, are taking risk. But there are different type. I mean, ways how they can manage. I mean, this asset. Okay, let's take a very. I mean, a very. I mean, straightforward example for that. When you go to an Islamic bank, you say, I need a car. Because at the, when you go to them, what, what is the, I mean, the contract between you and the Islamic bank? The contract is there is no contract at all because the bank does not, do, I mean, does not, I mean, hold, I mean, own that car. They cannot sell. In Islam, you cannot sell what you don't own. You just give them promise. I promise, I mean, I need that type of car with all the, I mean, the details of the car. But I promise you as a bank, if you buy this car, I will, I will buy it from you. This is a promise. What happens if the bank go, let's say, go and acquire the car and buy the car and you can you broke your promise, you don't show up. What's happened to the bank? This is a risk they are taking. But they have different way to manage that risk. But this is a real issue. Not say, okay, it's the same thing. No, when you go to a conventional bank, they just give you loan. They will give you assets, I mean, to asset, I mean, assess your credit worthiness. If you are, you are a reliable people and person to give you money, they will just give you that money and, and that's it, and you go. But the yeah, Islamic bank, they're taking assets risk and more risk. That's why, because of that risk, they have li they have to make return from that risk, which is a profit margin. Uh, but, uh, I mean, a profit margin from, I mean, from, from the, the investment or from that contract. It's what happened. But uh, because the devil in the details, we can say like that it's the same thing, but at the end, it's not the same thing. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Before we uh, proceed, I would love to check in with our viewers to see if they have anything to contribute. Uh, Huda, uh, Huda, don't be stubborn, my sister. <laughs> You, you can learn. And uh, yeah. Zulaika, we are so sorry you're going to have to miss, but you will watch the reply and we shall be here to attend to your questions in case. Zahra, walaikum salam, thanks. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, this is now in our language, but it means that we are happy to have that guest. Uh, it is a message from Sister Zahra. Uh, Zahra, Hello. thanks. Uh, you, you you will learn maybe something. Uh, Brother Dean Hassan, Mil Dean Hassan. A uh, long time I had taken some time without hearing from you, but he has something that's not the integration of the Islamic banking system into. Does not the integration of the Islamic banking system into the secular based uh, market find itself conflicting between the two systems? So is there any conflict? How can it operate alongside the uh secular based or the capitalistic <laughs> best uh, yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah yeah because yeah at the end because we have some margin you can move because you know the global financial system is based on on interest and i mean sadly muslim countries or maybe do not i mean control the type of, of institutions and sometimes difficult to make the rules and it's very difficult. It's the same thing. Like I mean, just to to clarify this, uh, and many. I mean, when you, you have a central bank in any country, and the relationship with the, I mean, with investment. I mean, those type the bank and the central bank. I mean, is they have to put um, the because they require. I mean, reserve in the central bank. Normally, it's ten percent. It's ten percent, because then Basel three is uh, up to I think 11 percent or twelve percent. Is eight percent in Basel three, but this is our terminology. But what happened? Now you have to put ten percent of the um, of your deposit of the um, the general public to the central bank. But normally the bank doesn't have that type of sometimes sometimes they don't have that money or they have it. But you have to borrow from the central bank or from other bank for just they call it overnight overnight loan just for one one night. Because every day we have to, I mean, to, to adjust, I mean, the base on the on your on your uh, on your on your on your on your savings to put that, I mean, require uh, the reserve in the central bank. But this type of, I mean, when it comes to this risk management for the Islamic bank is very tough because it's difficult for them to borrow money, and there is no developed Islamic financial market to borrow money from. Is there some of them operate in Malaysia, but it's very difficult to assess that money. But what we can do at the end of the day, Islamic financial system is there, 
But when you go to judicial system, because I mean, Islam is an integration. You can just not take the financial system. When people, I mean, get disagreement, where you have to go back? They go back to, I mean, to, to secular, I mean, justice systems. At the end, they won't look at anything. They will maybe be dealing with interest. You have to, let, let's say, if you take a loan from, from someone and that person defaults on your loan, you have to pay. At the end, you have to pay, I mean, late, I mean, late fees on that money. At the end, you will be charged, and this, I mean, there's some, I mean, conflict in between those. But Islamic financial system, I mean, institutions are just moving with the, I mean, with that interval and allowing them to do what they can do because you cannot have everything, but we are just, they are trying to, to do the best they can do and sometimes to push, I mean, beyond what is there. But this, yes, yeah, sometimes there are some conflict, but many times, when, when it comes to general public, there's no problem. The, I mean, the problem comes from in the institutional level, not in just, I mean, in the general level. But institutional level is difficult because you have a central bank regulate other commercial banks. And the country is, if the country is based on the secular system or anything, that at the end of the day, Islamic bank have to follow those rules. And that can be sometimes conflicting, I mean, as, I mean between the two systems that happen. Wow, that, wonderful. That's it. And he, he had a continuation, I think I'll respond to it. He said, uh, upon such conflicts, how is the upholding of Sharia-based standards uh, kept at the expense of the general law? Or does the general law, I mean, this is a conflict of law, okay? And uh, under such circumstances, actually, I, I as I was doing my research, I, I found that what he's asking, Brother Mildin Hassan, is, is something practical. So even in countries like Malaysia, we have had scenarios where the, the judge, one judge interprets uh, in terms of uh, common law, and then the Court of Appeal rules against that because it, is, it goes against the Sharia standards. Yeah. So in UK, I found some cases, and in other countries where there is other jurisdictions where there is uh, Islamic banking. So this is a real challenge, Brother Mildin Hassan, and uh, you are right to ask about it. However, it goes back to the court system, okay? And in the end, the country or the land of the law will definitely rule, but like, you know, any system, hmm? we go on advancing and developing. The, there is always, if you have good, a good legal team as an Islamic financial institute, you can always find a way to forego uh, such matters, you can find a way to go around such difficult legal difficulties, but uh, you are right and you're on point. I think this is one of the challenges, the legal part of it, because many countries, for example, Uganda itself, my country, uh, is not a religious country. So it is, it is uh, for everyone. It is not based, the law is not based on religion. And when you introduce something like we should observe Sharia law, it definitely will collide with, uh, with, with some fundamental articles in the Constitution itself. So this is uh, uh, an eminent challenge, but like Brother Abdul Majid has said, we work with what we have right now as we advance slowly and slowly because we need to be a little bit aggressive so we can present to the world the solution it needs. We're tired of uh, the, the, the interest-based, the capitalistic, way of uh, having only one group uh, very rich and the other was uh, are not rich. So we just have to work uh, with what is available. Uh, thank you, Brother Mildin. This was uh, quite a question. Just Let me see. Add, and, what, and that's just to add that I think on that is just, I mean, one of the alternative can be have uh, arbitration. I mean, to have, I mean, a parallel yeah. system, which is the arbitration, they can go to arbitration, which can be costly sometimes. But at the end of the day, it can be based because they, I mean, the law will abide. I mean, they will, I mean, strengthen yeah. the, when you go to arbitration. That can be one of the possible. Solutions. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually, uh, talking about that alternative dispute resolution, uh, and these are the, this is, these are usually the way to go, yeah. not just for Islamic banks, but for every big corporation, every big institution because they do not they want as much as they can to avoid courts so you can go for um, you can actually go for arbitration like brother abdul majid had suggested and in uganda the system the system is like you have to go through mediation before the case can be presented before uh, 
in commercial court hearing. So you have to go through mediation. So many cases can be solved during this process without having to uh, actually make it a, a real case to be heard in the court. So these are other ways we could go through uh, to avoid such conflicts, to avoid uh, matters concerning or going against Sharia and conflicting with the general law of the law of the land. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Abdul Majid. Yeah, thank you. We, we have, uh, let, let me see. Hafsa is asking which business is more better for a Muslim believer? I don't know, I would say a business that observes Sharia law. <laughs> I don't know, there could be many businesses, but any business that, uh, every business is good. Just try to avoid the haram, and haram is just a very small portion of uh, the transactions people uh, indulge in. What do you think, Brother Bilmajid? Yeah, I think yeah, it just there yeah, is a bit. I mean, just to all I can't say all business is good, but at the end of the day, you just have to look at what I mean to uh, the Islamic perspective, and at the end, you can do based on your skills and your environment you are in after everything. But for me, maybe I'm more interested in technology. I'm in technology, maybe that's because we are seeing what <laughs> technology technology okay. is happening everywhere. And I will say, okay, it's a very good, very good business, but it have a lot of bubble there. But at the end, I think we just can just, someone can just apply what you know and strengthen, I mean, based on your talent and your skills and to, and to follow. But and to very put in every, the business you understand, you have to invest, I mean, start or invest in that business because you have to understand. But if you don't understand, you'll be played with Aaron and with people, as people and everything can happen. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And and uh, we uh, have an institute, which is Excellence International Institute. We have business coaching. So uh, for people who have ideas, who have money, and they would love to develop ideas. So either way, it is a good thing to work with a business coach so you can get a little bit clear about what you want to do and how you want to invest. Then you can go ahead to consult other people. So it is good for you to do your background uh, preparation. We have, uh, this is eye-opening. Ibrahim is uh, appreciating. Uh, thank you. Okay, let me see. Mariam Abdunur, I don't understand something. I thought the reason someone would go to uh, a bank that offers loans with interest is to ask for a car. F to ask for a car is because they cannot afford it. So how does the Islamic bank sell this car to someone yet they can't afford <laughs> they can't afford it in the first place or does the person pay in uh, installments i don't understand please elaborate so she's like we, we we go to the conventional banks to to get a loan so we can buy a car yeah. and the islamic bank does the same thing it buys the car and sells the car to you so how do we sell a car to someone who does not have money anyway <laughs> ah yeah yeah but yeah maybe i didn't yeah, elaborate on that but it's the same just you pay it by installment like like how the conventional bank if it's the same thing they will i mean sell it to you but you have to pay it an installment and maybe five years ten years depend on yeah i mean the contract but normally i mean the same thing you pay it an installment no difference normally yeah yeah okay but but the thing is here this is not interest and the other is interest. this is the, the bank will be uh, making a profit and not a profit that comes as a way of, uh, by way of interest. So the thing is here, the bank also uh, is liable. liable. If, if in case, yeah, if, if in case there is something, the bank deserves this amount of money because it is liable to the risk. So it yeah. takes responsibility. This is the principle in Sharia, al kharaj bil daman so if you're to earn something, you need to take responsibility of that thing. So the bank has to own at a certain level, has to own the car. So in case the car, if in, in case anything happens to the car, it's the bank that is responsible to, for that car. So this, and that, the bank transfers that car to you. So you also take the responsibility and pay it uh, in installments. Brother Mariam Abdunur, I think, I hope we have answered you uh, that question very well. If not, you can always ask again. 
we have neither guy i get to islam saving if i get to islam islamic saving bank to borrow me money to lend me money will they ask me how i'm going to spend it yeah very good question but normally they won't give you a loan at all because if they give you a loan they won't profit i mean make a profit from it because they can charge you interest at the end of the day that's why this is the beauty of islamic finance always the financial i mean contract is aligned with the real economy because it goes by by uh, hand by uh, 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 hand because we cannot because it's difficult when you look at even the financial crisis it just happened with decoupling between the financial asset and the real asset the real economy and the financial economy and here the bank will not give you because you have they will say okay because at the end they have they should have some type of contract and all the contract and islamic and islamic and islamic contract are based on type of asset at the end we cannot just give the you money I, i mean i mean except if is you they have to know what you're going to do with that money because at the end if you are going to do something we said haram and that money they won't give you at all you say maybe you are going to spend your study wedding anything mm-hmm. but they have yeah. to know what you are going to do with that because they are not allowed to give you money to i mean to finance something which is forbidden by islam they can't do that at all that's why they have to know what you are going to do with that money because no yeah so they will definitely they will definitely, have, they will definitely okay yeah. they will definitely have to ask you why you need the money but uh, they don't usually give loans because a loan has to be qard and hasan and uh, that is not a way to make money yeah. <laughs> that is uh, more the islamic bank give that i mean and i heard like and uh, they got kuwait finance house beta tamil kuwait they give card hasan yeah i mean you just give a loan and just you pay it, the same thing but is a very mm-hmm. small portion of the investment and normally most of all the mean systemic bank they don't make because the problem is people say why they don't do that because the, at the end of the day it's not their money is i mean public's money is not for them because when they, i mean and there are a lot of i mean tough regulation on banking system our banking system they have to invest and them to make money from it because sometimes we as a muslim we just think, think about thing like it just have to be i mean free or charity no you have I mean you can make money while I mean I mean uh, and respecting your your religion or your faith because when you say okay Islamic bank they don't even people who have some mis- misconception about Islamic bank they think if you go to Islamic bank I need money they will just take money and give it to you they can't do that they will assess you to know your credit history your background if you will be able to pay the money or not because the money is not belong to them it's the people's money that's why they are intermediaries money does not belong to them that's why but people do they have, they have some i have seen some people who have the misconception about that they say okay when you go to islamic bank they're not different they're not different yeah and that when they assess you you have to be even in islam i, I mean is it allowed to take a money if you know you, you surely know that you're not able to pay that money is that halal for you at all it's halal can we have if you know i cannot afford the money or you cannot afford to pay something is halal for you to go and borrow that money is an emergency that's another case but if you don't an emergency you have to borrow that because why if when and even in islam when you take a loan or a car you have to specify when you are going to pay that money you are going to pay that money you have to specify that and you say that by expecting that you are get you are get, i mean you are going to receive some i mean some fund in in in, in the future that i mean and and, the, and that way you'll be able to pay that money but you cannot take a mm-hmm. money i mean just take a loan if you are sure that you can you are not be able to pay it okay and and that applies to to even day to day life if you know you cannot pay back the loan if you actually have no intention of paying it becomes haram and right from the start there is a hadith uh, that allah will help and uh, pay back the loan on behalf of the person who borrows money and they want you read ada so if you take a loan and you want to pay it back you have that good intention and you going to work towards Uh, attaining or achieving that Allah will help you and the opposite is true if you take a loan and you know you're not going to pay it Allah is not going to help you pay it and definitely you have uh, to bear the consequences here and on the door of judgment there is a, a very quick question here we shall take a few like three questions so we can proceed with our topic as okay. uh, Zaika is asking if you have a boutique that sells both Islamic clothes and short clothes is it haram 
Well, it's like uh, the, the thing about cloth is the cloth will always be halal until you use it in a haram way. So the business is halal up to now. But what is haram is for the person who uses it in a haram way, wearing short skirts and moving around the public. A cloth can be uh, uh, worn inside the house. So the business is uh, up to now is okay. Uh, Wallahu a'lam. Uh, Brother Mildin Hassan is asking, is there any chance Brother Abdul Majid could elaborate on Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in the light of, uh, as a medium of exchange? Would you love to comment about that? Yeah, I maybe don't get the question. I mean, the light of... Is, like, is there, would you, would, what would you say about it? As Is it a medium of exchange or... Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's because the method of change not fixed, even in Islamic. And when you go to, I mean, I mean, the money, I mean, it keep changing when it comes to the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and now it can change. Money is just a medium of exchange. And just, it's all, I mean, what people accept and, I mean, you, I mean, you exchange and accept it, become a money. Today, because when you look at, I mean, we used to have maybe coin or maybe gold or silver. Now we just have numbers. It's just, even, even just not... It's just not even, I mean, the paper or the notes or the coin. It's just numbers. When you go to shop online, you just transfer numbers, and we accept that. And I think cryptocurrency is accepted, I mean, so from many, I mean, big corporation now, and even some universities in the UK, in the, in the, in the UK here yeah, accept it. I mean, payment with uh, Bitcoin, and also cryptocurrency is just one of the I mean, booming sector in, yeah, because based on the, I mean, on and the technology backing that, which is... Uh, uh, blockchain technology and all this stuff. I think is a medium of change. People can accept it, and I think just the problem, the question come and when because the strength, and, but not just a keep uh, a cryptocurrency. Let's say my 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 uh, I mean my 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 currency safer, safer. I can spend it in West Africa, but when I come to the UK, I can't spend it. No one will take it. Why? Even to change it to I mean to British pound, I can't because people do not because. At the end, the medium, I mean, the currency is, I mean, is derived from the power of the country, the issuer, which is the country. Because you can take the cost some a hard currency, which is euro, yen, uh, dollar, I mean, pound, and all this. You can, I mean, exchange it everywhere in the world, but there are some type of currency. If you take it with you, it should be just a paper. You cannot, because people do not trust them. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. When it comes to Bitcoin, people will say, okay, I don't trust that currency. I can't accept it. But that's, I mean, that risk is uh, still there. But if people accept anything as a medium of exchange, it's an amazing of change. I mean, I think they didn't know, I mean, anything wrong with it. With, with no doubt. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, there is a brother here. Oh, Brother Mildin Hassan, thanks you for the reply. And we have Brother uh, uh, Ali. Thank you very much, Brother, for this explanation. Now, there's a question from uh, Brother Hassan. Is higher purchase equivalent to Murabaha? Higher purchase equivalent? Equivalent to Murabba. Higher, higher purchase? Oh, the, the, yeah, because higher purchase, we shall be uh, buying something and selling it on uh, 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 a, a higher price. So they will pay in installments, but slightly higher price. I think it is biotaxid. So would we say that biotaxid is Murabba? Yeah, no, Murab, yeah, Murab, yeah, no, yeah, the contract that is, is not the same thing because by tax it mean I mean you just I mean pay something by installment, but Murabaha is where you because in the Murabaha they call it um, and the, I mean the fiqh they call it buyul uh, amanat. Something is based on trust because in the Murabaha you have to show your your profit margin. I will tell you, I bought this car one thousand US dollar, but I'm gonna sell it to you one thousand one uh, one thousand. And ten, I mean ten, or you, you have to specify how much you bought it and how much you're gonna sell it. This is, I mean, murabaha. But taxit is not the same. It's just based on the method of payment. How you're gonna pay that money? But and I mean, a murabaha is different because it's just you have to say I buy it this way and I'm gonna make this margin on that money. Normally it's the same, yeah. But in, mm. but in the commercial, I mean, Islamic bank, both are combined because they will say it on the margin. I mean. They will tell you what the mar their margin are, and at the end, you're going to pay it by installment. It's like a combination of two. Okay, so both of them shall have someone paying in uh, installments, but 
from a legal sharia legal perspective murabaha is bayal amana i mean bayal amana is one of the uh, those contracts where you have to disclose uh, how much you uh, actually purchased before you sell so you have to tell the one who comes to you that i bought this car a hundred thousand dollars and i'm selling it to you at 120 dollars 120 thousand dollars okay but in bayat you will not have because it is one of the Buyol Musawama, so it is not a condition that you have to mention how much uh, you bought. So that is something deeper. It has an impact when it comes to, when it comes, it ends up in a Sharia courtroom, okay? But in, in, in day-to-day life, in normal transacting, people might not really notice the difference. So thank you very much, Brother Abdul Majid, and uh, people are thanking you, just thanking you, and you're most welcome. Uh, everyone, Brother Omar, Brother Sister Zulaika, thanks please. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Rahma. Uh, Brother Abdul Majid, we are 40 minutes down the road, yeah. and I really would, would have wanted us to talk about the investment banks and the brokerage, brokerage uh, farms, but uh, I think we shall just talk about the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So how is a conventional insurance company different from uh, an Islamic uh, insurance company, then maybe we can look at uh, um, something else before we close this webinar. Yeah, this uh, yeah just to elaborate on that, normally, and the insurance, they call it like Daman. Okay. Daman is, I mean, Islam look at Daman as a charity. You cannot make money from Daman normally. Because when you go to an insurance company, like you, a car insurance, you pay, I mean, a fees or any, let's say, you buy, I mean, you bought a, a insurance policy to say, okay, in case if this happened to me, you have to pay me this amount of money or you have to repair the damage or all this stuff. And this is like Baman, like giving you insurance. But at the end of the day, insurance, it look at like a charity. You cannot make money from it. This is what, I mean, conventional insurance corporation or mainstream, I mean, insurance companies are doing. But in the case of Islamic insurance, because insurance have to is a charity, but an Islam, Islamic perspective is just to be a collective insurance, which is based on collective. I would say the Islamic I mean, insurance companies, they call it takafu, normally takafu. The takafu is a collective insurance, which when we have, I mean, we come to the insurance company, I, I mean, I give, I mean, uh, uh, normally we say, okay, this, uh, let's say 100 people, they come to that insurance company that pays the fees. That money is not for the insurance company. An Islamic, I mean, Takafu is not for the insurance company. It's for the people who pay that money. But they have, collect the, uh, they have the collective, I mean, collective duty to, I mean, to help each other if something was happen in the future, if the business or anything. But the Islamic insurance company is just a manager of that fund because it's a fund. You have to be invested somewhere. You have to be look. I mean, take care of it because if you have just money, I mean, a money, a currency without investment is you are diminishing the value of the money because of the inflation and because of the opportunity cost because you can invest that money. But the Islamic comp uh, insurance company, they will manage that money for you. And also, if something happened to someone, they have to pay that money. And but let's take example. If just people, I mean, pull money, one million US dollar, just to pull money to insurance company, and maybe the fees will be ten percent of that. If a damage happen which exceeds that amount of money, the insurance Islamic insurance company is not obliged to, I mean, to pay that, because they are just, I mean, an admist, I mean, a, a, a manager of that money. They can invest it and make money and pay people who, I mean, who have some damage, but at the end of the day, they cannot exceed. But when you go to the, I mean, conventional insurance companies, they have to pay because it's like a gambling. You say, okay, you come, you give me money. If something happened to you, I give you that money back. I mean, I pay you. I can pay more than, you can pay more than you, I mean, you, you, you provide. Or maybe if you, nothing happened, I just keep the money. It's the same thing. It's like a gambling. But an Islamic is, is not the same thing. Because collectively, your money, Islamic, I mean, uh, insurance company will, I mean, will pay you up to the, the collective money. It's not for just someone, but the collective, the pool of money for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, I mean, the, the main difference between this type of, I mean, Takaful, which is Islamic I mean, insurance company, and mainstream mm -hmm. insurance company. 
Well, uh, thank you very much. I, I, I maybe to chip in and uh, add something. The way I've understood you is like uh, when it comes to Islamic insurance, uh, we do not transfer all the risk to the company. So there is no buying risk. Okay, and this is one of the sources of uh, haram, getting this risk and selling it to someone. So the insurance company in the conventional system buys that risk and we give it a little bit of some money so you can uh, stay at home and relax. But uh, on the contrary, in the Islamic uh, uh, insurance, si insurance system, you cannot do that. You give the company your money, so you and a few more individuals or many individuals gather with an agreement that we are going to help each other in case we land into trouble, in case one of us lands into some uh, trouble or in case one of us uh, actually the risk happens. So this money will be yours. And in the conventional banking system, that money is now for the company. You have no right to claim it in case they are uh, passes, right? Pardon? But you can... Yeah, I, I was uh, just trying to throw more light that in the Islamic, Islamic insurance system, the money is for, the, for those that are participating, for the for the for the uh, clients, so it is yeah. money for the company itself. The company shall be paid, or maybe you can have other ways like Murabaha. We can always have other ways of uh, uh, helping the company profit from whatever we are doing. But it is not its money. So when we put in our money as premium, we are not actually giving away our money. We are just telling the company, you keep this money and invest it, handle it in a, in, in, in a reasonable way, but the money is ours. So it doesn't matter if the year goes by or it is generally not their money. And here in the conventional uh, insurance, the company comes and buys the risk from you. And that is not allowed in Islam because it becomes a zero sum game. For one to win, one has to lose and zero sum games are uh, prohibited uh, in Islam. I just wanted to make that simple uh, addition on that explanation. So, Brother Abdul Majid, I think there are, I can't see any questions about or regarding uh, Islamic insurance. I wanted before to be, before we uh, uh, close this session, mm -hmm. I wanted us to talk about the importance of the Islamic financial system. Why is it important? I mean, after all, we have a running system why would we need an alternative yeah and maybe we can talk about the challenges that are facing the islamic uh, yeah i will just start financial. from the i mean the real story when you go back maybe to, i mean 12 years ago to 2008 when the financial crisis struck and um, what people will say okay we don't care because you don't care but everyone will touch because financial institution or financial system a global financial system Sometimes in a mess somehow. But what happened in the United States will strike everybody, even if you are in Uganda or anywhere, because those type of risks are correlated risk, all banks, because the global financial system. What happened? Let's, I mean, shed some, some light in that crisis. What, what happened there? And the big bank, what, I mean, the bank give loan, provide loan to, 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 to public. When they give loans, they have to assess that month, I mean, to know the, the borrower credit worthiness before giving money. It was just come from the, um, the mortgage, I mean, the college, the, the mortgage, I mean, uh, market. And what happened at the end, when they call it something securitization, I mean, when people, the bank, what they do, they have loan from people. I mean, when they give loan to people, they, this is like contract. They pull this amount of loan together and sell it to another agencies and other, I mean, corporations. And when the bank say, okay, I can make money from that, because if, I mean, the loan is for 30 years or for 25 years, a mortgage is a very long, long term investment. And I can get my money within two or three years. What I do, they just start giving money, loan to, to people. They call it ninja loan. Ninja loan, I mean, they give loan to people. They call it ninja, no income, no asset, no job. They give them money. I mean, those people try defaulting. And when they default, that's, I mean, people who bought, I mean, these sec securities from the bank, I mean, now, the, the, I mean, the value of that securities become worthless. That's why the financial crisis strike. 
And now, this why is important? The financial system is financial system is important. The first of all is to avoid this type of thing because it will just, I mean, say, I mean, selling and buying debt, which is forbidden by Islam. You cannot sell or buy a debt. That one. The second thing is we have to, I mean, be really careful where our money is going to, because you can, if you put your money in somewhere, we are all responsible of, about of our money. If you put your money somewhere, you have to make sure where my money is going. I mean, it can do, I mean, it can, do, is, is, the, is my money doing well or good to society or with destroying society? If you put money from any, I mean, type of corporations, they don't care, they can invest it anywhere. I mean, to help, I mean, uh, tobacco companies, or maybe alcohol companies, weapon companies, and many stuff, and which will, I mean, will destroy the society. At the end of the day, we are all responsible for that. I think that that now in the in the in the in the West now they call something ESG. I mean, investing investment. They call it um, the this, the type of investment we take into account environment. I mean, uh, uh, social and governance issues. Now this the big pool now over I mean, they call it ethical investment or they call it uh, social uh, based uh, social responsible investment. This is happening everywhere because people are seeing what happened with our money because you not, don't know you give your money to the banks. They take it, what they're doing with that money. We have to make sure that put it in a good way which will profit the society and research, maybe and development and anything which will be a, an asset for the society, not a liability to it. That's why I think it's very important. We have to put, I mean, our money where our faith is. I think that's very important. But if we don't have alternative, and it's a responsibility for everyone, I, I mean, to, to support those Islamic financial institutions, because who are going to invest in those type of, 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 uh, of, I mean, of, of banks, institutions? Me and you, Muslims, I suppose. When they say it's very, I just uh, I read something, it's very, I mean, it's striking, I mean, but it's, it's interesting. They say, you know, Islamic, Islamic bank in the world, I mean, represent only, I think, 2%. I think two percent Islamic financial, I mean, uh, financial system, I mean, financial asset, in the world represent two percent. If I'm not mistaken, but Muslim is a culture of the world. I mean, twenty five percent in the world. Why this is going? Why, why? I mean, when you look at trying to make it, I mean, some comparison is not. I mean, is not. I mean, is not. Uh, you look at uh, the, the, big, the big gap and what happening. We just represent twenty five percent of the global. I mean, I mean global population. Just we just have I mean two percent of Islamic the asset I mean held by Islamic financial institution is just two percent of the global um, asset is which is very I mean is a I mean wake up call for all of us to try to do something how we can I mean support this type of institution I think that's the importance of Islamic financial institution. Great, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, someone brother Hassan is commenting on one of your uh, comments you made uh, a few minutes back. Uh, the explanation brother Abdul Majid uh, clarifies an existing arrangement in the UAE among the Pakistani community. They operate exactly the same way, minus institutionalizing their arrangement. We've been greatly enriched by your efforts, our good brothers. May Allah bless you and uh, with more beneficial knowledge. Thank you, brother uh, Hassan. May Allah bless you too. And uh, this really means a lot that you can relate to what I mean. You know, it is a, it is one thing to learn, but integrating and relating what you have learned to the society, that is another skill. And I think Brother Hassan has it. Many of us go to class, but can we integrate the knowledge in daily practice and make that connection like the one he's making? That is not a common uh, thing. So may Allah reward you and grant you more knowledge. Um, Brother Mildin Hassan, where is Brother Mawanda Fahad? Let me ask you that question and we proceed. So uh, we have seen that the Islamic financial institution is coming as an alternative to actually save humanity in many ways, to avoid, to help avoid catastrophes, especially uh, because the global system is so connected. Anything that happens somewhere in China, somewhere in the USA, somewhere in, somewhere in, uh, in Africa, it will affect the whole uh, humanity. So what are some of the challenges? Because it can't be an easy thing for, for these uh, financial institutions to work alongside the conventional and in the, pre in the, in the dominantly uh, conventional system. 
Yeah, I would say maybe uh, normally there are lots of challenges I'm facing because everything, I mean, important thing will face some challenges. I mean, what I will say, the main, I mean, that I will just shed light on three maybe big challenges facing Islamic financial institutions. It's just, I mean, the regulatory, I mean, challenges because we are operating in, in a system or an environment which is based on, on interest. This is not easy because, I mean, sometimes the system is not suitable for them. In some countries, I mean, they have, I mean, the, I mean, uh, some solution like in Malaysia, they have dual system, which we have system for Islam, I mean, financial institution and system for, I mean, conventional institution, and in some many countries, is not uh, benefit and just a favor to Islamic financial institution, but at the end of the day, the whole system be will be fit in that system which is built in years. I mean, I mean, hundreds of years ago, which is very difficult for Islamic institution to make some move because an Islamic financial institution it should be that why one of the critiques should be based on risk sharing principles, but they cannot do that. It's difficult because when you have public money and you operate in a system which is based in interest, even now let's say many many Muslims do not understand what is going on. I mean, with Islamic financial institutions, they don't know when it's asking them. No, it's just it's the same. They say just the same. There's no difference. They don't know this because I mean I mean our mind and the concept is framed based on the and on that type of financial institutions. This is one of the biggest uh, challenge, and I would say the second the technological challenge because the technology and banking system is huge and is also I mean growing very fast. Like we go to fintech industries, but this type because now I mean big banks, big corporations, and um, I mean have a lot of money to invest in that type of. Of project, but Islamic finance is a niche. I mean, a niche sector. It's very difficult for them to make that huge investment to make a challenge. That's one of the difficulties, and I would say reputational challenges too. Because reputational challenge within Muslims and I mean within even non muslim within Muslims they will say, okay, no Islamic financial system. I have seen many people criticize the Islamic financial system, even imams, not just I mean. The typical people, no, they are imams. They say, okay, those times is the same thing. There are worse people. I say, what you're saying? I mean, there are worse people. What do you mean by that? He said, no, they are the same. Like, it's better to go to, to, to bank with, I mean, conventional bank more than Islamic bank. They say, what you're saying? He say, no, because, I mean, maybe the cost is high. I say, yes, the cost can be high. But are you, I mean, are you interested in your faith first or what you're going to get? Because this type of financial institution, Islamic banks, they're trying to put alternative for a Muslim. That's one of them. And the repeat, one of the reputational challenges is, you know, now when we are in the world when, I mean, Islam stick with anything is make it dirty. I mean, I mean the, norm, the name of Islam is problematic in itself. When you say Islamic finance, Islamic bank, people will try to distract, I mean, to try to, to, to distance themselves from it. I, I mean, one day I just, I was in, the, in not a conference in, East, in Saudi Arabia, I just, I mean, make I mean, a comment. I said to people, I've seen many people, when you talk about Islam, they're not comfortable at all. But when you talk about Islam in finance, they're comfortable because it's, it's about money. When you say money, people are comfortable about it. But you say Islam, they, I mean, no, no, like, even Muslims, that's a reputation. Because why? Because people, many people are fear from, I mean, political Islam. And Islamic finance too, they are afraid. If it become a big thing, big thing, they will try maybe that people will say, okay, maybe they will uh, finance terrorism and lot of, I mean, I mean, nonsense thing. And all these reputational challenges is happen. People will try to distance themselves, even Muslim or non-Muslim, as much as they can from anything with Islam. This is one of the main challenges facing. Even the awareness among Muslims is very low. Just last time I was, I mean, I mean, discussing Islamic finance with some people, they say, okay, I just ask a question, who, I mean, we're just, we are, were five or, or six people, I ask them, I mean, who among you have any account in Islamic bank? None of them. Me included, me included. I don't have account in Islam, any Islamic bank. Because I tried to open it, but the way, I mean, the place I went, Liverpool, there were no Islamic bank there. But now I moved to London, I'm in the process to open one and one Islamic bank. But at the end of the day, people do not understand, and they don't want to understand. Even last time, there were one awareness. I mean, it was uh, uh, one of the of, of reports. Uh, I mean, published by Gatehouse Bank, one of the Islamic bank here. They call it Consumer Report, 2019, and they found mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. only I mean, 45 
percent of people just have here just the name Islamic finance. Just hear that among Muslims, not not Muslim, among Muslims they know anything about Islamic finance. It's forty five percent, but among those people, just only five percent of um, of those people. I mean, bank with uh, any Islamic bank, and it's just I mean, scary. But this is the reality. Wow! Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Majid. It is really so sad the time uh, when discussing important uh, topics. Time uh, whizzes by very fast. So. It is already 60 minutes and uh, we are coming to the, actually we have come to the end of our webinar, but just to summarize Brother Abdul Majid's uh, points, the biggest challenges and the reason I'm summarizing these challenges is that I want to, I want to leave this to you, uh, fellow Muslims and everyone that is watching, what are we going to do about them? There are uh, regulatory, regulatory challenges, issues to do with the law, uh, to be able to uh, uh, be favorable, to be made favorable for Islamic uh, banking or Islamic financial institutions to work and operate. And we have the technological challenges, so we need people to be able to do something about that. We have reputational challenges. And about reputational challenges, definitely, we, we had some in Uganda before the law was passed or the, the, before the law was amended. We have many people actually among which are knowledgeable uh, or who criticized Islamic banking and they did not want it, want it to, to, to be really introduced. Why? Because they, they, they said, they said it, it is one way to fund terrorism. And of course they knew that was false. So that was really something very important. And challenge number four is awareness, lack of awareness. So these are the challenges, brothers and sisters, whoever is watching, whether live or after, we need to do something about these challenges so we can help the industry grow uh, faster and faster. Yeah, before we close, ah, Mawanda Fahad, you are watching. Okay, thank you very much for listening and thanks for being quiet. Uh, Mawanda Fahad is. <laughs> okay. okay, Sister Shifa, thank you so much for your effort watching from UAE. Thanks, Sister Shifa for following, grateful for your insights, and uh, may Allah bless you too. Thank you very much. Uh, Sister Naigaga, before we proceed, can you make me comfortable with the importance of Islamic Saving Bank? Because I didn't get it right. So, uh, do you understand her question, Brother Abdul Majid? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Ca can you hear me? Yeah. Islam yeah, there is a question bank. from one. Yeah. I I I didn't get it, but I think I said Islam is saving account. Normally. Okay, maybe it's an account maybe. called an Islamic bank. They have them saving account. They give you, I mean, maybe percentage on it, and based on the investment, I mean, you make from the money you deposit in those kind of, of banks. That's it. But mm. I don't know any type of Islamic saving bank, but uh, you have no clue about it, maybe. I, I think she, she meant uh, uh, Islamic saving account, savings account. So you will still get a profit, but it won't be uh, uh, a profit that comes as uh, by way of interest, but it will be by way of having invested and getting a return on your investment. I think that is it. But it's not available uh, in many banks. In it in the UK here, but um, it is in not countries you don't have. Saving. Yeah, that's one of the sad. I mean, it's, it's not. Mm, so it is not so common in practice. Yeah, it's not common in practice. Yeah, because the bank okay. here they just try to provide alternative for Muslim communities. That's why I mean they are trying to do what conventional banks are doing. But normally, I haven't I haven't seen that in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, they have an investment account, but even I haven't seen a Muslim saving account in, I mean, any country. Mm. I mean, yeah, they, they usually have current accounts and and then and, and maybe the kind of uh, other investments. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Brother Mawanda and Brother Mildina, thanks for that. Let me see, Zwaika is people ignoring the project after knowing everything, especially the Muslims can be, yeah. People ignoring and not participating, Zulaika is saying, is one of the challenges. Uh, we need to 
to participate. Oh, yeah, my network is not clear today. Shifa, uh, you were right, Naigaga. I also realized that, but I hope uh, you have benefited. Uh, Brother Fahad Mawanda says the regulatory aspect only needs us to be more and more involved as Muslims uh, in the governance game. Well, that is uh, very ambitious. I like it. So when you get involved, definitely you can have a way to make such a bigger impact. I like that, Brother Mawanda Fahad. This is why I want you to keep quiet. You need to be commenting. You have beautiful comments. All right, Brother Abdel Majid, we have five minutes past the time we uh, had organized the webinar for, but we are really grateful to have you always. And I believe this is the time you, when you, you get to promise our viewers that you will come back next time. <laughs> I, will <make> it. <laughs> I, will, I will do the best effort to come back because it's interesting I mean, to discuss with brother and trying to, because it's our responsibility of all of us. We have to, everyone have to do what you can and wherever you are, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think uh, it's mm -hmm. responsible for everyone to, to make a contribution because at the end of the day, it's for us. We are doing it for our self and our community, our religion, and I think that's very really important. I mean, if you learn something and you don't share it and benefit from it and bring, I mean, trying to help people with it, I think there is no use at all. That, I mean, I think you have to keep trying. Is the, the, I mean, the way is very long and it's going to be challenging and difficult. But we have to keep moving. At the end of the day, we arrive one day. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Abdul Majid. May God bless you for the time you have given us, for the knowledge you've shared with us, and may uh, this be one of the reasons you, one of the many reasons Allah will have to give you Jannah, inshallah, together with everyone who is viewing, whether live or uh, watching offline. Uh, may Allah grant us all Jannah, and may Allah uh, help us and uh, give us knowledge that is beneficial. Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Mahdi. Thank you very much, everyone. And right. assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We hope to see you uh, next time. Have a good night. Is that clear, Father? Hello? Hello, yeah. Actually, I, I'm done. I was just saying that you should have yourself a good night. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right, brother.